sorry guys for the noise. Uh, it was hard to find a spot with a little bit of shade uh, to park and shoot in. Um, but I wanted to throw together a quick video um, about my 99 fixed roof coupe. The FRC, uh, which was code name or nickname the Billy Bob Corvette, was uh, designed to be a stripped down um, kind of enthusiast model car. Um, as you can see here from the name, it's got a fixed roof, fixed roof coupe. Um, so before this, uh, when they launched the car in 97, it had a removable target top with a longer sloped back. Um, they also came out with a convertible, I believe in 98 and 99, they launched the hard top and it was kind of geared towards the enthusiast, uh, the people that were going to go out and drive their cars hard, track their cars, stuff like that. Um, these cars, very limited options. Uh, in 99, uh, there was no HUD available. There was only one color for the interior that was black. Although originally, I believe they threw around making a cloth seats uh, roll down window with a V6. So I'm glad that idea got, got axed. Um, but they only came in a handful of colors. Red is actually the most common. Um, in 99, they made, I think, 4,000, just over 4,000, like 430 something. Um, and then in, two th in 2000, they made uh, another, I think, 1,200 or something like that. So production numbers on this car are actually really, really low. It's one of the, um, it's actually the rarest C5 body style. Uh, obviously, you have like your 40th anniversary um, and some other special editions that may be more limited. Um, obviously, everybody loses their mind over the Arctic White, which, I mean, it looks good. I lose my mind, too. Um, but this car kind of was the predecessor uh, to the Z06. Down the road, uh, GM decided to put the, uh, the LS6 in 2001 in the same chassis, essentially. It's already got Z51 suspension. It's T56. Um, and it just it performed so well. Uh, that GM was like they revived the Z06 uh, nomenclature that I think had been dormant for since the C2 so uh, I think in a way and other people have speculated um, that the reason that we have high-end performance Corvettes uh, Corvette in and of itself is kind of a performance car um, but that we have the high badge the high performance lines um, models if you will is due to the success of this car so C5 almost didn't happen in general. Um, but then they basically, I think GM had an ultimatum like, hey, you better sell 25,000 of these cars or we're done with, this, with the Corvette. And the C5 sold like crazy. I think total production numbers, I think were 200 to 250,000. So there's a quarter million C5s. You still see a lot on the road. It's 2022. I mean, I see C5s fairly often um but not all the time but the z06s are a little bit more rare um which was the the baddest c5 made uh and then the frcs are even more rare i've only seen one other frc besides mine on the road so they're kind of a unique bird kind of rare um but cool kind of a niche car a lot of people don't know about them um especially outside the corvette world uh you'll talk to some people and they're immediately like oh is that a z06 no it's not not a z06 one of the easiest ways to tell is there is no, here, there's no brake duct. Z06 has had the brake duct, and there's also no badge on the fender. So, easy ways to spot a Z06, uh, a Z06 versus FRC. I'm selling this car uh, to make way for another uh, project that I'm working on, and so um, I, it's a bittersweet. I, I don't really want let it, to let it go, uh, but I got to. All right, time to get off this abandoned road. Driving impressions of this car. It's a six-speed LS1 car that weighs roughly 3,100 pounds. So, in my opinion, driving impressions are good. Um, it's loud. You get a lot of road noise. Um, I am blessed with a bearing that's going out on one of the tensioner pulleys that gives me a little squeaky squeak 
it's uh, mildly annoying because it makes your car sound like it's a bag of bolts even though it's not but it kind of is um, no there's no lateral roll to the body and there's very very little uh, like front to back roll in the car Um, I purchased this car about two years ago, and the goal was to build a nice heads cam uh, street car, just to kind of tool around on the weekends, maybe drive to work on Friday, stuff like that. Um, just like everything else, plans don't always go as planned. Um, I changed jobs, we had some family stuff going on, um, COVID hit the world, fortunately. Uh, so put a kind of damper on the festivities as far as the budget to mod um, the car. So the car basically sat in the garage for two years, relatively untouched. Um, I did put the C5Z wheels, there are true C5Z wheels, on the car. And I did uh, a set of tires on the front and shift knob custom and I did an antenna because the antenna on the car was terrible. Um, so I bought this car used off of Facebook Marketplace and I got a pretty good deal on it, uh, but it needed some love. I knew it needed some love, but I was like, you know what? For the, the bang for the buck, the car's worth it to me. Um, so pulled the trigger and like I said, Plans kind of slowed down, didn't get, really, didn't, didn't get to do what I wanted to do with the car. Um, found another project that I wanted and felt was a better investment, uh, which is the 70 Nova uh, in my first video. Picked that up, I kind of explained why, thoughts behind the car and stuff like that in that video. Um, but I'm still gotta, I still gotta sell this car. Makes me a little, uh, a little sad. This is definitely the second, as far as the driving, driving experience. This is the 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 fastest car, the funnest car I think I've ever owned. Um, runner up to this would be my six-speed uh, G35 sedan that I had a couple cars ago. Now, I do like daily and pickup trucks and stuff like that, but to get in a car, road gears. Um, I love it. This thing is low. You look up at everything on the road. Um, the only thing you don't look up at is Miatas and other Corvettes. Um, people's headlights are in your eyes. These windows haven't been tinted on the to-do list that never got done. Bang for the buck, it's hard to beat a C5. Um, they're light. They run good. If you get a T56 car, it's got, it just pulls and, um, it just pulls and it can also get real good gas mileage um, you can get on the freeway roll 80 and in six gear you're turning 1400 rpms and it's so low so light and it's aerodynamic honestly it's a great road trip car it's a little low getting in and out I'm not a big guy and I'm young and it's not the easiest thing to get in and out of however once you're in it, it's comfortable. Everything's at your fingertips. These cars are aluminum, uh, fiberglass body on an aluminum frame. They have terrible grounds. Overall, a couple things, the 99, um, and I think the 2000, up to 2001 actually, sorry. They had a different 
It's called the Electronic Brake Control Module. So E B C M. Probably misspelled that. Um, and it's basically the brain behind the ABS and the traction control and stability stability control. When the brake control module goes out, they don't make a replacement. Uh, and to my knowledge, there's no workaround. So once it's out, it's out. Um, the only the only uh, option you have is a replacement with another used one. And if it doesn't work, you're kind of SOL. Um, one thing about these, about the Corvette in general, is there's a thing called the Corvette tax. Um, LS family of motors is all very similar. So your Vortec family and your LS family are basically identical. Um, if it says Corvette in the description, it's going to cost more money. Um, just the nature of the beast. A lot of the stuff can be sourced by the regular AC Delco component that's not Corvette. Um, and you can save some money like that. Another thing about this car is they do have a weird little they get a weird rap. It's like, oh, you have a Corvette. And you're like, oh, yeah, I paid I paid ten thousand dollars for my Corvette. It's not like it's a not like it's a rich man's car. Um, not the ones that are twenty two years old, twenty three years old. Also, for some reason, whenever I'm driving my Corvette, I never come across anybody that wants to play, except a couple of diesels. Um, Whenever I'm driving my pickup truck, I see Mustangs and Camaros and all sorts of stuff. It's a bittersweet. Um, the car's a lot of fun to drive. It does need a little bit of work though, um, and I just don't get to I don't get to use the car and enjoy it to the level that I wanted when I first bought it, or the level that I thought. As I mentioned before, um, the car is for sale. I'm not really. In, I need the I need the funds to, to build a Nova, uh, and so that why that's the reason this thing's for sale. It's definitely not because I don't want the car anymore. Uh, so I got all these people lowballing me, and it's just like, and I already don't want to sell the car. So don't lowball me. Don't don't insult me like that. Um, but it's a good. It's a good car, it's a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully the next owner will find some enjoyment out of the car uh, and enjoy it as much as I do. Um, kind of final thoughts on the car, and if you have the opportunity to pick one up at a good deal, especially a six-speed, I would, I would say do it, but just know uh, that the aftermarket support is there but some of the products are getting harder and harder to find. So brake control modules, stuff like that, are, are almost, I don't want to say non-existent, but you're going to pay a premium for them. Um, but for the price, I mean, where else are you going to go find a 350 horsepower, potentially six-speed uh, car, V8 car that weighs 3,100, 3,200 pounds? So, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, I know it wasn't super exciting, but I did want to put out some content on this car uh, before it's gone. And um, I thought with it being kind of unique, some people might find it interesting. Um, some people obviously have already checked out. They're like, this guy's blabbing again. We've got better stuff to do. But if, uh, but if you tuned in, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, comment. Tell me what you think about the FRC. Do you have one? Uh, how'd you get it? Um, let me know. I, I've never run across anybody in person that had an FRC besides myself. Actually, take it back. One other person, uh, a buddy of mine, his dad had an FRC many, many moons ago. Um, but uh, comment. Tell me what. Tell me about your FRC. There's tons of stuff to read, and there's also some other videos about the fixer and coupe. So if I sparked your interest. Uh, go look it up. Go do some homework. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.